Hi friends, this is all where our five grafting mistakes, the video started when we were doing it exactly a year ago. We didn't know that there will be 21,000 views after a year and so many people writing about it. So many people ask me questions in YouTube and outside of YouTube about the specifics of these, uh, that video that I made. And that was just a uh, sharing that I didn't intend it to be a highly educational video but it did people said that it really helped their grafting and improved their grafting ways so i wanted to do a, a one year update on that five grafting mistakes and because because in the video i said that there is nothing written in concrete i keep on evolving my techniques and so should you the video was just meant for you to get curious about grafting and not make the same mistakes that i did I since then changed a lot of things and I wanted to tell you what changes I did since then. I started to do more of because in the beginning many, many people were asking me science and they would ask like let's say this is the thickness of the branch they would ask do you have science exactly this thick and I would tell them you don't really need a science exactly that thick you can even graft onto a thicker one or a thinner one all you need to do is match the cambium. Another thing that I changed is, uh, you can see the clips here. Once I join the cambium together, then I wrap it with uh, body tape. You could do it with parafilm as well, but I do wrap it with body tape. And then to secure them, I use the clips. I found out that, you know, instead of just doing a branch, because initially I was scared, I was doing most of these kind of guts. So change number one, what I did, was I started doing these kind of crafts where you know you directly go to the uh, take a thick branch and a thin one like here so you just scrape the cambium the bark get the cambium and put it in and it's pretty easy it's almost uh, a no fail technique I, I started to use for thick ones I started to use these uh, zip ties and if there are thin ones that I can still use the cloth spin, I started to use the cloth spin there. So five changes if you ask me. Number one change would be that I, I started to do more of a bar graft since last time and I stopped caring much about the thickness of the sign or thickness of the root stock itself so that was not that was some a big change that i did second change i did was instead of using the electric tape i started actually using the cloth spin because what happens with cloth spin is that you can always reuse it after you are done and the graft takes you can take it off and use it in other places so that was another thing i did third thing that was the second one <laughs> So the third one is because you know you always have to check for where you are grafting. Are you grafting in a dry place like Arizona or are you grafting in a wet? We are it's raining right now. <laughs> I know it, I was a strong supporter of electric tape but I found out that especially here in Florida when it gets too much humid during the summer months started to rot inside a lot of moisture was actually trapped inside the electric tape it works very well probably in a drier climate like california or other place where it's not as humid but in florida i stopped using the electric tape i can still use it uh, during february march or november time when the humidity gets low and another was covering with the plastic i haven't had the necessity to do it like you know i have a couple of crafts here this one is newly pushing graft. I haven't had the necessity to do it. Uh, so uh, I think it's just good humidity here. Maybe in places where there is not much humidity, you may want to create a greenhouse effect. But this year I didn't do the plastic method and uh, everything is taking at least for me. So for, for me, for this microclimate, I haven't had the need to do it. You have to make sure that you know the conditions you know you need to graft when it is raining rainy season you you may need to graft when it is windy season so many times grafts fail because rains started to enter inside the graft so that's something that i had to work on a lot and i started to use the body tape to secure in between as well 
and uh, when I was using the cleft graft it was not hurting as much because you know tired of having failed grafts sometimes you may think that is it your mistake that it's your grafts are failing is it the mistake of the guy who sent or the farm who sent because they were sending grafts with no buds at all um, or is it the weather so tired of everything uh, you may think like your your grafting skills are not good anymore or you may start blaming someone else but I found out that this tree it's a it's a lemon zest tree very vigorous tree and whatever grafts I have put on it takes and the graft may not even have an active bud at present it will still take and then push a bud after two months or three months versus and this one is actually a grafted upside down. <laughs> so it was grafted upside down. The thick portion is up there, the thinner down. I made a mistake, but it still took. And, um, and everything is taking. I have seven or eight different varieties grafted onto it. Not because I don't like lemon zest. I just was getting science and I was grafting to different places like one tree, two tree. All the other places were failing, but this one was taking. So I come up to, uh, a conclusion or my own finding experience that try to find out if the rootstock tree is in good health and it is it it has vigor in it or not uh, sometimes the tree is in good health like many of my indian mango trees like guava mango tree or uh, malika mango tree but they don't want to flush all the times they, they are kind of dormant and then they flush one or two times a year and that's it or guava fl mango flushes whenever there is a lot of rain otherwise it's not even flushing and things fail so um, I, I found out that it has to be a, a variety that wants to flush a couple times uh, maybe once a year once a month at least and has to be healthy as well so that was something uh, change that I did from last year number five and it's important it's not so much about the grafting itself it's about how you get the science actually because here in Florida many people get science they buy science from different farms and they ship them or sometimes you go to the farm and bring them back when the signs are shipped it's a couple of days already and sometimes it gets delayed the longer the delay the the less are the chances for the science to you know take so there is a small amount of percentage getting less and less so I try to go to the farm or go to friends home who are giving and bring and I have done both when I have brought the science just in a ziplock bag I higher percentage have failed versus when I put them in a ziploc bag and take with me like an ice pack inside a you know in, inside a cooler bag they have stayed very well and they have taken well so I don't know it, it's something I'm still working on but there's not ma many times I go to friends or to the farm to bring science I I have always now started to do that method to take a cooler bag with some um, with some ice packs inside and bring the science inside ziplock but keep them inside because the car can get hot and you know it would not be good for the science if it gets like that it's almost like uh, transporting uh, organs you know you want to keep it cool because you want uh, the organ to get attached to another tree so that was uh, another um, another uh, change that I did also I did a couple of different changes after this these are the major five changes but I did change like jackfruit grafting I started to do more of an approach because I, I failed a lot of side grafting I didn't try the, the top uh, the cleft grafting but approach worked pretty well for me so that's what I tried I did uh, tamarind grafting many side grafts failed and I did the top graft which actually is taking so you know it's one of those there are some trees that that want to be uh, active that want to have a leader branch so you need to cut, cut the top leader and graft it there that's the only way you cannot have a side graft at the bottom and then the leader will keep on growing and the graft will not take many times it has happened to especially for fast growing trees like you know jackfruit also happened with tamarind for me so there are some minor changes that um, i have done i have done uh, sour soap graftings as well and it looks like it's a very tricky one but it's uh, it's different from other anonas in this in the in the fact that it sour soap grows actively during hot and um, rainy season so you need to graft during those times 
not during the February early spring time like you do with other anonas. So a couple of changes, couple of, uh, but again, I would say I'm constantly changing things. So, you know, many people uh, write to me, said, you said like this, but now you are not doing, uh, we followed you and this happened. I'm not saying follow me. I'm saying do your own changes. Maybe you are in a different microclimate. I'm just giving you a viewpoint of what changes I have done. You don't have to do the same changes. Probably you have your own way of doing and you will find your own way of grafting. But there is no harm experimenting. Like I said in the last video, do not catch my finger. I'm pointing towards what can be done. Look where I'm pointing. Do not get stuck to my finger. So, <laughs> because it always happens. And now I have like 20, 21,000 views and so many followers there watching the grafting video. I, I, I felt like I have evolved from then. You need to evolve as well. You need to keep on changing your technique because you know, with time and situation, things change and that's how you learn. You learn by changing and uh, le learning each time by making mistakes and learning further. And you will one day have your own perfect technique. Thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe.